one third of all deaths in adults 65 years old and older are due to infections. Why is that? What's going on? Michelle? I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Why? Blanca? Decreased immune system. Okay, yes, decreased immune system. Give me an example. Thymus gets smaller, shrinks, so they have less T cells available to fight infection. They also have decreased cough reflex. Mm -hmm. Decreased cilia function. Yes. Mm -hmm. Then um, the, mm -hmm. dry skin. Dry skin, yes. Physiological changes like dry skin. Morbidities. Diabetes. Okay, diabetes, how is that? Um, it, well, most of the old people has a lot of sugar in the, the blood. Glucose. Uh -huh. Go on. Mm -mm -mm. I need help, I need help. Pick a patient, the, the, the pick a friend. <laughs> okay, here's Blanca. Um, mix the sugar in the blood, makes the blood thick, can get to the extremities. Poor wound healing. Poor wound healing, great job. Another issue we have to deal with is communal residents. A lot of our patients are coming in from long-term care facilities. They're living together, roommates, breathing in the burner germs. <laughs> Yes, mm -hmm. a lot of them are on antibiotics, so that could be antibiotic resistance. Mm -hmm. People are hand washing in between patient care. And maybe the, the residents themselves aren't, you know, they are sharing things. They are sharing things. Okay, so Depends. we have to get yeah. on top of that and be able to teach them not only to prevent infection while they're under our care, but they can stay healthy once they leave our facility. Mm -hmm. So, other uh, ways that they are at increased risk while they are in the hospital is because of indwelling devices such as urinary catheters, feeding tubes, and intravascular catheters. Now, Urinary catheters, uh, catheter-associated UTIs, is on the decline in our facility. So give yourselves a hand. Great job. Great job. Keep up the good work. All right. But surgical site infections are on the rise. So Aww. yes. So you, you need to. We need to get on top of that. You know, use aseptic technique when we're doing those dressing changes. Mm -hmm. uh, be it doing good assessments for infection on those uh, sites. Okay, and then also we got to get those antibiotics up, those prophylactic antibiotics, okay? So what kind of things are they more at risk for? Pneumonia. Pneumonia, yes. Pneumonia is a big one. Uh, pneumonia is actually very important because 50% of all pneumonia cases per year are in adults ages 65 and up. So it's very important to pay attention to that in our elderly yeah. population. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so these are all major problems. What are we going to do? What are we going to do about them? Teach families hand washing. Teach the patient hand washing. Hand washing. Yes, very important. Hand washing for us. Hand washing for the patients. Hand washing for the family. Everybody needs to wash their hands, and we need to show them. Okay. And those who are sick must wear masks. Yes. Yes. So not even Absolutely. Them. Yes. Use our protective. I'm thinking now. I'm thinking. Okay. Great. What else are we going to do? What are we going to do about the pneumonia? Turn cough, deep breathe, and send us barometer. Get them up and moving. Mm -hmm. Yes. And again, encourage good hygiene and encourage the flu and pneumococcal vaccines because uh, flu is a major risk factor. Take showers. Yeah. They the, take showers. So the pneumon box, they get it every, they get it the initial one if they're under 65 and they get it one more in five years. Right? Yes. So we want to encourage that. Think that about covers it. We covered UTIs, healer uh, devices. We want to get those out as soon as we don't need them anymore. Yes, Blanca. Get the catheters out. Get the catheters out. That's very important. Okay, so we actually had one person call in sick today. So, yes. I, I know. Thumbs. She had diarrhea, okay, and we don't, want, we don't want the diarrhea being spread to us or to our patients, okay? Again, infection is what we're trying to prevent. So, okay. there's been a, a change in plans. So now, uh, Blanca, you have Miss Garcia in room 202. Can I borrow your pen? Yeah, okay. All right. All right. All right. Go get report. Thank you, guys. A few moments later. Hi, Miss Garcia. How are you doing today? Good. I'm doing good. Okay. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna do a head to toe assessment on you. All right. How you wanna do what? A head to toe assessment. So I'm gonna check all your body systems. Make sure everything's okay. No, 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 no. no. Why you have to do that? I'm gonna 
make sure that I have a baseline of how you're doing, of your body. Make sure there's no skin breakdown because skin breakdown is a way of getting infection. I'm also going to listen to your lung sounds, make sure you have no fluid because then that will give us, let us know if you're getting pneumonia. All right? Okay, well, what can I do, mija? Let's listen to your lungs. You ready? So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna expose you. Expose me? Yes. Let, let me let me pull my other one. <coughs> hey, Grandma! Hey, oh, you my old people! <laughs> Oh, wait a man. minute, wait a minute. Uh, I, brought, I brought the thing you wanted, Grandma. How are you? <laughs> excuse me, excuse me, sir. Sorry. Are you a family yeah. member? Oh, it's me, Abuelita, right here, man. Are you sick? Uh, you know, I, I've been having this cough, but okay. uh, I wouldn't say I'm sick, just, you know. Well, I see you coughing, so I'm going to ask you to wash your hands before you come in contact because she's elderly. We don't want her getting sick bringing germs in from the outside so if you can come over here and okay. wash your hands okay okay gracias mijo gracias anything for you grandma because All she's right. elderly she's at high risk for infection so we don't want to spread any anybody with a cough or right. cold so we're going to ask you to cough into your arm wash your hands before you come in contact oh uh -huh, yeah 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 <coughs> Because she's elderly, she also has less warrior. Her thymus is not working. She's at risk to get sick. My what? Your warriors. What your thymus makes is a gland in your neck. Oh. As you get older, what you used to be protected, you're no longer protected as much. Hi, mijo. ¿Cómo estás? Oh, you know, just... Well, how are you doing? I'm here to see you. You're the sick one. I'm just... Just got a little bit of mocos, yeah. <laughs> so that's it. Let's see if you're. Can I what? ask you to wear the mask? Well, what? Why do I gotta do that? I washed my hands already. Right, but you're still coughing. So when you're coughing, the germs can go in the air, and she can inhale, inhale whatever you have. So I have oh, a mask. Okay. And you've washed your hands. So do you understand? Yeah, you, don't you don't want, want her getting pneumonia on top of her fracture. You don't want my mocos flying all over the place. <laughs> Two hours later. Good morning. <gasps> Hi, good morning. I'm Summer. I'm a registered dietitian. I'm going to be talking to you today about nutrition. Are you Maria Florinda Elena Gonzalez Garcia? Uh, si. Okay, I just have to check your name bands. Can you tell me your name and birthday? Maria Florinda Elena Gonzalez Garcia. And when's your birthday? October 31st, 41. All right, and it looks like your record, medical record number is 1234567. Perfect. So today I'm going to be talking to you about nutrition <laughs> and how to uh, make sure that you're staying healthy so that uh, we prevent any infections from occurring, okay? What kind of foods do you eat? Uh, well, I don't have any options. Sometimes, uh, well, I cannot cook. I cannot cook. My daughter sometimes she brings some couple foods for me at home, but I don't cook so much. What kind of foods does your daughter bring? Well, she works a lot, and the way home, go back home, she just brings me some pizza or a hamburger or, you know, my favorite add my, my cheese on salsa. So it's really important that when an elderly person is in the hospital that they eat a well-balanced diet and stay hydrated so that we prevent infection from occurring. Okay, you're drinking some juice. So I brought you a couple of pamphlets today that you can um, keep on hand so you can refer back to them, maybe put them up on your fridge, okay? The first one is a pamphlet that just shows um, different foods that are good for you to eat, proteins, fruits, vegetables, um, and there's a little pyramid on there on uh, which food groups to, to read up on, okay? The second pamphlet I brought for you is uh, talks about different options for you to get healthy meals delivered to your house. Um, so you don't even have to get up off the couch, but healthy meals can be delivered right to your door. Oh, oh, me. Come, here. Come here, come here, come here. Oh, oh. I bring your favorite foods. Okay? Mm -hmm. What is this stuff? Oh, no, 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 no,
When patients become sick, their activity level declines, which means their lung activity declines. Lungs that don't stay active are more prone to infections. Using the incentive spirometer will help to keep the lungs active throughout the recovery process, just as if the patient was doing their normal daily activities. It is important to use the incentive spirometer 5 to 10 times an hour during the recovery time or every day if the patient is bed bound. Ready? So I'm going to teach you about the incentive spirometer. And so what you're going to do is you're going to blow out and you're going to suck in and this is going to go all the way up and we're going to see how high you can get it. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, so you want to take this, you want to hold it. Now blow out. Now put your mouth on there. Now suck in. And let's see how high you get it. Higher, higher. Okay, to take out your Foley. Yes, because for every day a Foley catheter is left in, the risk of getting an UTI increases a ton. According to what I know, I have, okay, where am I? Where am I? According with the nurse, the nurse, the nurse told me that I have to keep my dentures very clean. Then I had to use a lotion and keep my skin so hydrated to prevent the infections in my skin. Why? Because it became so dry, maybe things can in my skin is going to be itchy. I want to scratch and then I want to open the skin. I want to get infection. Okay? So it's very important for me to keep my mouth clean, my dentures, and my skin very clean. One of the important things about me, because not, not only because I'm an old lady, because I'm a lady, I have to clean from to back. Why? Because I have to prevent some UTI. Hi, I'm Nikki. I'm a physical therapist, and I'm here today to work with Maria Florinda Elena Gonzalez Garcia. She recently had a hip fracture, and now it's important for her to get up and moving so that we can prevent complications. All right. Come on, Miss Maria. You can do this. Easy, easy. Easy. This is so if you start to feel wobbly, I'll have something to hold on to, okay? Yeah. Are you feeling dizzy at all? Uh, not yet. No. Okay, okay. You can do it. Come on. Okay. All right, on the count of three. One, two, three. Now push. Okay. You can do it. You can do it. How is that? Good. Okay, great. It's important to medicate your patients before activity so that they feel more comfortable with moving. Infections can take a huge toll on every person's body, especially the elderly. It is important that nurses teach patients the importance of preventing infections so that patients can continue living a healthy life. Raul de la Cruz. No, no, no. Rrr. Heavy on the rrr. Raul. <laughs> Very close. <bold. laughs> Today we're talking about incentive spirometer. It is pencil. <laughs> I can't talk. Okay. She told me that I. Okay, no. I have to learn again. Yeah. Okay. I'm here to work with. Say your name. I don't know the name. <laughs> Maria Elena. You have to. Maria Fernanda Elena Florita. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make it up. <laughs>